Good evening and welcome to 7.30 WA. I'm Andrew O'Connor. First tonight, a remote WA mine claims of shoddy mining practices and workers threatening a class action. Two months ago, the state government shut down a copper mine in the Pilbara after the formation of an enormous sinkhole. The mine's owner, Adita Birla Minerals, sent hundreds of its workers home without pay on the basis the company couldn't be held responsible for the collapse. But current and former employees of the mine say the collapse was inevitable. This report from Lucy Martin. This is the Birla Nifty copper mine from above. And this is a massive sinkhole that has left hundreds of workers in financial limbo and called a company's safety record into question. Yeah, the warning signs were there. There's an accident waiting to happen. The company that owns the mine, Adita Birla, claims the formation of the sinkhole was beyond its control. But three of its workers tell a different story. I don't call it a sinkhole. I call it a, a rockfall. The whole roof collapsed. This is a man-made hole. This isn't an act of God. They talk of sloppy mining practices and a blatant disregard for workers' safety. I don't think I can put into words what I feel inside. That the company did that to their workers, loyal workers, good workers. The Nifty Mine lies about 350 kilometres east of Port Hedland, on the edge of the Great Sandy Desert. It's owned and operated by Adita Birla Minerals, part of a $40 billion Indian conglomerate. I didn't want to be a part of a, a system where production was going to cost somebody's life. Brad Gardner worked as the mine's underground foreman for almost two years. Almost straight away, he was alarmed with the way the mine was run. A lot of the regional pillars started to move. Uh, there was cracking going on in the, in the mine, which is not normal. At the Berlin Nifty mine, copper is extracted from the ground using a method known as stoping. Holes are drilled into the rock from above and below before the ore is blasted out. The broken material is then trucked away so the copper can be extracted in a facility on the surface. The extraction process leaves large holes, known as stopes, up to 60 metres high and 25 metres wide. The ground's under a huge amount of pressure uh, because we've taken a big hole out of it. The holes are filled with a paste made of concrete and waste material from the crushed ore. The paste acts like a plug, easing the pressure bearing down on the pillars surrounding the hole. An engineer would forecast what stopes need to be mined at this particular time, and what, where the other stopes are going to be paste filled, so that we could operate safely with filling in one area and mining in the other areas. The problem was the team in charge of backfilling those holes couldn't keep up. As the underground team worked its way around the mine like a checkerboard, the void increased. I was concerned with the ground, the, the ground pressure that was in the mine and it was in, to do within the regional pillars which hold the whole mine up those regional pillars should not have had that much amount of stress on them. So what did you do about your concerns? Uh, relayed it up the chain, yeah. What did you tell them? I just said that you know, we need to be, we can't keep on bogging stopes um, and not filling them. He wasn't the only one getting worried. I was notified by my underground fitters that um, there was cracks starting to appear in the 70 level workshop on the actual floor and in the roof. And I went down and I looked at the cracks and it was definitely a, a big concern to me. Peter Duplessy is still employed by the company as a supervisor in Nifty's above ground workshop. He too approached management with his concerns last year. They um, said to us that um, they'll get back to us about these cracks and they never got back to us. It felt to me that they just brush it under the carpet. He says employees had little choice but to keep working. I, I was very upset about it. I was very concerned about the safety of my underground fitters. And I, with our toolbox meeting every morning, I used to tell them specifically, if you guys don't feel safe, you've got the fullest right, 
coming out the hole, get out the hole and come and tell me you're not, you don't feel safe. But speaking out was a risky business. If you don't like it, leave. And if you don't want to do it, I'll find someone that will. That's what this worker, who doesn't want to be identified, was told after expressing his concerns. We were not happy with the conditions of underground for quite some time. Everyone would complain about the safety of it, but doing something about it would mean you'd lose your job. Many workers are convinced the troubles at Nifty are due to the company's drive for dollars. I think it's more about saving money. I mean, every, at the end of the day, every company's got an obligation to its shareholders to make money for their shareholders. The share price for the company's obviously been under a lot of pressure for a while, and that's really because the, the grades at the mine have been falling, and hence it's now actually in a stage where it's, it's most likely going to lose money this year on its mining operations. Just last month, Adita Birla Minerals announced its annual revenue was down by 37%. On our numbers, we anticipate that companies probably reinvesting $20 million less this year than they were last year. Now, it's difficult to know the motivation behind that. It may be a case that it's just that, you know, the mine is actually forecast to be loss-making this year, and so it's difficult for a board to reinvest into a loss-making asset. Um, so we do see that that potentially could be creating some issues there. To make up for a fall in the quality of ore being extracted, the company ramped up production. Workers say it was not uncommon for stopes to collapse while miners worked nearby. The number of miss incidences that the employees have had involving failings, rock failings, being in a location that 90 minutes before something major had happened was actually getting quite common towards the end. How many times? that we got equipment into the workshop that half of the wall collapsed or half of the roof collapsed and it just smashes that piece of equipment to pieces and then we have to fix it. Then we find out what happened. No, the roof just gave way or the wall just gave way. And it, it did happen not once, not twice, not three, five, six, seven, eight times. And the company did nothing about it. They just said, no, that's part of mining. In February, a worker on level 23 of the mine was nearly killed when a stope cracked and a mixture of rock and paste shot out. He narrowly avoided being crushed by his vehicle, which was thrown into a wall. The situation came to a head in March when a large sinkhole appeared in the mine's open pit. The only thing about it that surprised workers was the fact that no one was injured. There have been serious events in the past where large quantities of fluidised material go into mines and, and people get seriously hurt, so can't be too careful in this case. The Department of Mines and Petroleum quickly shut the site down, but according to this man, workers were still sent underground. The employees were sent down to the bottom of the mine while a lookout was sitting in the 16 level in case of a flood incident. Eventually, the company flew almost its entire workforce home. Workers who had annual leave banked were told to use it. Those who didn't got nothing. Adita Birla invoked a stand-down clause contained in the Workers' Enterprise Agreement that states the company doesn't have to pay its employees during mine closures if it can't reasonably be held responsible for the stoppage. But 730WA has obtained a copy of the company's own report into the collapse, which clearly states the sinkhole was caused by a stope being left open for too long. The report says the hole then merged with another stope to form one large void, which grew bigger and bigger. Personally, I think um, it is 100% their, their fault. Peter is convinced Adita Birla is responsible for the sinkhole and should be paying its workers. But he hasn't seen a paycheck in two months. It affects my whole family. I don't sleep at night. Um, two, three hours and I'm up because of what am I going to do? The Australian Workers' Union recently argued the employee's case at the Fair Work Commission but it didn't get the answer it was hoping for. The indication um, from uh, the conference that we had was that the company can do and apply the stand-down clause the way they have, and should we be looking to pursue anything 
uh, in the future, it would actually be quite difficult to do so. The union says that's because there's no proof the company was warned about the possibility of a sinkhole forming. We will never compromise on safety in the name of productivity. From the rock face to the boardroom, every person on our team is accountable and has a duty of care for their safety and the safety of others. Adita Berla Minerals declined to be interviewed by 730 WA, but instead sent footage of its managing director, Sunil Kulwell, answering questions. He says the company's initial report on the sinkhole only listed possible causes and it has since appointed independent geotechnical experts to examine the mine. They concluded that the most likely cause was a chimney cave and confirmed that the formation of the sinkhole could not reasonably have been foreseen and that the company can therefore not reasonably be held responsible for the current stoppage. The company has now started the second stage of investigative drilling in the mine, which could take months to complete. Sunil Kulwell is urging workers to be patient. They are understandably upset. It's a difficult time for them and for the company as well. It was not an easy decision. Right now we are doing everything we can to bring the mine back into operation, but we will only do so when we and the DMP are confident it is safe. We will not compromise safety, which is our highest priority. The Department of Mines and Petroleum is doing an investigation of its own, but two months on says it can't be certain what happened. The DMP conducts regular inspections of the mine site and has confirmed it did issue the company with a number of notices regarding the quality of paste fill. But when asked, the department's head of safety, Simon Ridge, didn't seem to be aware of the specific allegations raised by workers. Some workers are concerned the company ignored concerns from pit bosses about these stopes and about the structural integrity of the mine. Has the DMP been told about that and what's your uh, response? I'm not aware of any specific details on that, but obviously our investigations are ongoing. So Peter and his colleagues are taking matters into their own hands. They're pooling their dwindling funds to hire a lawyer in the hope of approaching the Fair Work Commission again. And they plan to launch a class action against Adita Birla. The facts that we've got, the proof that we've got on black and white, the, I think the company hasn't got a leg to stand on. And they, they're in denial. Peter doesn't want his job back. He'll never step foot on site again. But he does want what he believes is owed to him and other workers. They have to pay us. It's not a natural disaster. It's a bad mining method. The whole situation must be resolved now because we can't carry on like that.